Thomas, how are you? I'm just out walking around. Don't worry about the black thing here. That's just from the hernia surgery. I am really hungry. I see some corn. I'm gonna go get my corn now. Oh! Hey guys, I'm just taking a little walk out here on my trail. Uh, I know you're wondering what's an otter doing out here on the lawn, but I'm just taking a little walk here. I don't know. close one there with the uh, snare that modern refugee he's a real asshole i know you're wondering what's the otter doing up here in a tree but i smell some peanut butter over here so i'm gonna come up here and give myself a little oh <laughs> hey everybody this is modern refugee hope you guys got a little bit of a laugh out of that intro there um want to apologize to uh the folks at mr bill right off the get-go for that um I want to talk to you guys today about uh, traps and trapping, um, I guess from the angle of uh, preparedness. Um, I also want to thank uh, Uncle Bumble for donating a couple of things here that I'm going to be showing you in, uh, in this video. Um, but traps are a passive way um, to either uh, secure food or um, to control pests. And that's one thing that I don't see a lot of... Uh, I guess uh, preppers talk about when they talk about trap and they talk about uh, catching food, but they don't talk about controlling pests. Now, if you get a weasel inside your uh, uh, chicken house or you get a raccoon in, you're going to have problems and that could um, definitely affect uh, your ability to produce your own food. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, pest control and kind of how to use uh, some of these traps. Um, there's a couple different styles of traps that I have here. Traps are... Um, I guess broke down to a couple of different uh, varieties um, and that's what I want to talk about here first. Um, there are kill traps which are more commonly referred to as cana bears or like a mouse trap or like I got some uh, modified uh, rat traps here. Those are kill traps. They uh, kill the animal as soon as the trap is set off and uh, they're humane in that uh, aspect. Uh, the next type of trap is a foothold trap and uh, these kind of traps are more associated with with um, catching fur bearing animals and uh, you know saving the hide off an animal you catch and uh, utilizing that is definitely a good thing but I'm gonna kind of go more for the uh, kill traps and then the third trap um, that I want to talk to you guys about is snares and uh, snares are uh, basically simple wire uh, wire traps that um, hang animals up in and uh, and if they are caught right it will kill them other than that it will uh, immobilize them until you can uh, get there and uh, dispatch the animals but uh, the first one here I'm gonna talk about is the foothold trap this is uh, one that Uncle Bumble gave me here um, these work kind of like a uh, kind of like a mouse trap these ears right here these will uh, compress and then the jaws will open up the jaw will set in here and then you take this little tab right here and you hook that inside the pan just like you would on a, a mouse trap and then the tension of the trap itself holds this and then you can bait this or you can put this someplace where an animal will step on it um, these are basically used for fur bearing animals um, but they can be used in what's called a cubby set and what a cubby set is is it's a small um, enclosed area either something that you find in nature or I've even seen uh, folks use buckets for this they uh, they use uh, they'll set like a part of a bucket uh, in an area and they'll just leave it there and then what they'll do is they'll set one of these traps in front of that and then they'll put some bait in the back of the bucket well then when the animal smells the bait and crosses in there it's going to step on this because it has to go through the opening of the uh, bucket and then they're trapped um, you can use uh, foothold traps for that but you can also use cana bear traps and cana bears are a uh, a kill trap and they look just like this right here and they come in different sizes um, this is a small one uh, this is actually called a 110 when you start talking about cana bears um, the higher the number goes the bigger the traps are and there are some really big cana bears and um, cana bears have uh, kind of uh, this is a real large cana bear here um, this one would be used for uh, bigger animals I don't even know if I can flip this over here show you looks kind of like that right there. Um, cana bears are kill traps that can be used in those cubby sets like I was telling you about, um, but they can also be used for um, 
pest control. Now, if you have a uh, like a chicken yard or something like that, and something gets in there, you have like a little small hole under your fence. Um, you can set one of these conibear bear traps in that hole, and when uh, that weasel or whatever it is goes through there, it's going to set the trap off and it's going to collapse down. It's going to kill it. Um, Kind of bears are set by compressing this spring right here. And I actually got a kind of a homemade safety on this right here to kind of hold this uh, a little bit in place. But what you do is, is you uh, compress this spring and you uh, compress the kind of bear like this. And then you're going to take this right here. I'm not going to, all these parts have names, but I don't want to get into too much jargon here uh, for you guys because this is kind of just a, for kind of basic information. And you're going to push that notched piece of metal down over that and uh, then these little uh, whiskers or fingers whatever you want to call them that sticks down um, into the trap when those are disturbed when something goes through that then this trap will collapse down on it I still got the safety on here because I don't want to kind of show you how I take that off all that does is that keeps this spring compressed and uh, that way you can use it for transporting or whatever um, collapse this down here and take the tension off this and uh, if you have a little bit of a safety on like this the larger con of bears they have safeties on uh, both sides but if you have a little bit of a safety on there it's already uh, semi compressed so then you can uh, uh, set your trap a little bit quicker um, the larger con of bears like this big boy here they got an actual hook on that you can hook on the same thing um, so you can compress your springs at home uh, or semi compress your springs at home head out to the field and then you can set your trap but um, another thing like dens and stuff if you have like a woodchuck that's destroying your stuff or if you need a woodchuck to eat because you can eat woodchuck um, you can uh, set a kind of bear right down into the opening of that den and when that woodchuck goes into that den or whatever that's going to collapse on and that's going to kill him and uh, if you got a woodchuck that's going underneath your barn or uh, you got a woodchuck that you got problems with we got a lot of woodchucks around here that people have problems with you can uh, utilize a con of bear for that um, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is snares and uh, snares are a real simple concept now this is a commercial snare right here this is kind of like a coyote size one but they have a swivel on the end homemade ones won't have a swivel on uh, because you're just going to be wrapping wire and they're going to have a little bit of a lock you're going to have a bent piece of metal on the top here and uh, that bent piece of metal um, will allow this loop to close but not open back up unless it's in the right position and um, you're going to typically use a snare like this on a trail uh, where animals are traveling um, and this could be in uh, urban and suburban environments too if you have a, a small area where there's squirrels running through or you have uh, some bushes along the foundation of a house where rabbits cross through a snare is a perfect uh, trap to use in uh, in those situations and uh, thing when you get uh, snares new or you make snares when you have this lock on here you're gonna want to run this um, cable through uh, at a bunch of different angles and what that does is that removes any burrs that are in there and it's going to make this snare move really really quickly and uh, that's exactly what you want uh, a snare to do because what happens is is when this snare is set and an animal's coming along and an animal goes into this head first whatever or head in a, in a paw whatever it is they go into this it's going to tighten down on them and uh, animals instinct um, when it comes a uh, tangle up with something is to back up so what that does is when an animal first goes in here and this closes down slightly they're gonna know if something's going on and then they're going to try to back up and when they back up that's gonna cinch it down it's gonna be tight and then they're gonna whatever they're gonna flop around if they catches them around the neck they'll probably even expire from that but uh, kind of wanted to show you what a uh, commercial snare looks like here um, I got another one that's kind of set up here um, snares typically are going to have a little piece of uh, rubber tubing on them. Now this rubber tubing actually um, works as a bit of a um, I guess a clamp to hold it onto a stand and uh, that way you can use a little piece of wire or you can use an improvised stick or something to hold this snare at the uh, right um, height for your uh, your prey to go through now you can make snares now I've got all kinds of wire and stuff here um, so I can make a snare if I have to and I got some snares here that I kind of made up kind of show you some basic stuff here 
Um, the big thing with a snare is, is you have to have a lock. And uh, like I showed you, um, and you can improvise a lock with a penny. And what you do is you drill a couple holes through. Um, so it looks like this. See it there see the holes in there and then what you're gonna to want to do is you're gonna bend that penny right in half what you do is you uh, clamp this down on a vise hit it with a hammer and bend it at a 90 degree angle and that's gonna make your locks just like so and then reach over here you can make your snare now this is 20 gauge wire what I got here for this snare I made a few of these up today and uh, I got a loop on one end and I could take this loop um, and I could take a piece of wire or whatever that I have and I can wire that up to a tree or a limb or whatever it is wherever I'm placing this uh, snare. Same thing, a little bent piece of uh, metal and uh, see if I got another one here. <clears throat> you can take a uh, just a heavy piece of wire and you can bend it um, or like I got here with this one, you can use a little bit of a Y branch, that'll work as well. And uh, I got a little piece of plastic tubing on here, but you can, uh, in a pinch, you can use cut up straws, like this is a straw here just from McDonald's. Um, so that way you're kind of uh, improvising what would just be trash to begin with. But what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna put this uh, stake in the ground stick, whether it's a, a metal one or it's a, um, a wooden one like a Y branch. And what you're going to do is, is you're going to take, you're going to take your uh, loop like so, and you're going to put a little bit of a bend in it. And that bend, try to show you here, put a little bit of a bend in it ever so slightly. And that bend is going to kind of hold that snare open just a little bit. And uh, what that is, is that's a little bit of a friction point. So when that animal goes through it, the same thing happens. It, it, gets, it gets bound up in it. And then, unless this lock is in the right spot, you can't loosen this up. Um, and all you do is you run your, uh, get you a little close up here. All you do is uh, you run your wire um, through your hole. Uh, on the top and you run you're through the other on the bottom and uh, you bend it over and you kind of ball that wire up right there and uh, that's a quick and improvised snare and uh, the a snare of this size would work for like rabbits maybe squirrels something like that on a known trail but that's kind of what it looks like when it's uh when it's set up and like i said that'll be stuck into the ground and then it'll be opened up for uh for the animals to cross through it and uh like i said you can use uh you can use a stick as well same thing here i got my loop on the end where you can uh, wire that off whatever and then i got a length of wire straighten it up here take your uh, penny lock you can use uh, washers too but pennies are actually cheaper and uh, you when you're using these pennies um, and you want it to be a older penny like uh, from the 70s that's solid copper yet or mostly copper the new pennies today are kind of an alloy and if you try to bend them over they're gonna crack and break on you but uh, all you do is you run that uh, wire through in that fashion right there I'll let you guys look at it in case you want to copy this and uh, and that's basically all there's to it and uh, you got yourself a little bit of a uh, improvised um, snare and uh, like I said you can make different size snare with different wire and I mean I've got all kinds of different wire here wires kind of one of those uh, prepping things that I just keep a whole bunch of different sizes and stuff around because there's so many different uses for it anyway and uh, making a snare is uh, one more use um, Another thing too, if you're setting snares, you're gonna need some type of pliers to uh, kind of tweak things, to kind of twist wire up, to uh, um, hold uh, your snare in place, and to anchor things down, or to cut the snare if you catch an animal. And that's where uh, the multi-tool that everybody carries around in their pack kind of comes in handy. If you got a multi-tool with you, it's gonna have a wire cutters on it. It's gonna have a way to uh, tweak that wire. Now the last thing that I got here is. Uh, is a big rat trap and uh, rat traps can be used to uh, catch squirrels and stuff but typically they're not strong enough uh, off the get-go you're gonna have to kind of turbocharge these guys and how you do that is, is you uh, put a small shim or a small block of wood underneath the um, the spring tabs that come out on the back side of the spring. What you're going to do is you're going to bend them up with a screwdriver. You're going to put a shim underneath there and you're going to put a little nail in there to hold that into place. And what that does is that twists that uh, spring around more and it compresses that cable even more to make this much stronger because uh, if you get a good sized squirrel and just a regular rat trap, they're probably going to, it's probably not going to kill them and they're going to weasel out. But if you turbocharge them like this and put a, uh, um, 
shim underneath there that's going to make this a lot stronger another thing that you want to do is is you want to uh, put a couple of uh, screw eyes in the end of the trap these are just real small screw eyes and then what you do is you put a uh, loop of string through this and uh, that looks something like this here like i got on the other one and then that way you can secure this trap typically up in a uh, limb now where these work really good um, is if you would put these in a tree that fell into another tree so you've got kind of an angled spot where you can set this trap on and uh, then on the loop here this loop right here what you're going to do is you're going to put that around the limb and then you're going to feed this right through like so and uh that's going to make a loop that's going to hold your trap onto that tree. And then how, why that's nice is, is if you actually catch something, what's going to happen is, is this is going to fall off the limb and then it's going to be hanging just like this. And that way, when you're walking up on it, you're going to know right away whether or not you caught anything. Plus, if you actually catch something, another animal isn't going to have a free dinner on you. And that's the thing with like snares and stuff. If you snare a rabbit or something like that, um, if you're not checking your stuff quite frequently, what's going to happen is is uh, the local coyote or the local fox or the local cat is going to have a, uh, a free rabbit dinner on you. Now, most of the stuff that I've talked about here is kind of illegal to do in uh, in most situations, especially right now. But in a world of um, without rule of law situation or in a survival situation where you're trying to feed your family, you know, some of these uh, techniques can be effective. So, of course, you're not going to want to uh, use this stuff now but if uh, if um, things go really bad uh, some of these techniques might uh, might help you uh, feed your family or protect your chickens uh, or uh, your ducks or your geese whatever you happen to have uh, out in your uh, yard to uh, to make you eggs and to provide you with meat because uh, nothing's more uh, disheartening than having a, a weasel or a fox or something like that get in and uh, kill half your chickens and I've uh, I've been there I don't have any chickens anymore but uh, I've uh, had chickens in the past and I've uh, seen that happen and like I said that can be really really upsetting so like I said I just wanted to touch base on uh, some of these uh, trapping techniques and uh, some of the traps and different snares and stuff like I said it doesn't have to be anything expensive you can improvise snares and that kind of stuff and snares are small you can carry a, a couple of them in your pack and if you notice I was out here playing around in my backyard um, because like I said carrying uh, some of these snares and stuff out in the woods uh, that would be illegal even having that stuff out in the woods right now so I definitely don't want to break any laws but I think this information needs to be uh, shared with you guys and that's what I was uh, doing here with this video today kind of touch base on some of this stuff so if uh, you're kind of into preparedness um, and you got uh, some of your bases covered already, you might want to look into some traps to uh, help you out uh, just in case uh, the world goes bad on you. But anyway, this is Modern Refugee. I appreciate all my subscribers out there. I hope you guys got a little information and a little entertainment out of this video. Um, you guys have a great one. No stuffed animals were harmed in the making of this video.